Hey everybody, Chris here with Tiny Home Tours. Just letting you know that the Tiny Living course is going live Saturday. That means this is your last chance to get 30% off. We're very excited for those that have already joined, but if you haven't yet, be sure to click the link down below. Enjoy today's video and we'll catch you soon. Four kids in a bus seemed chaotic. We think it's kind of cool when we all lay in bed here and just daydream about the places we're gonna go. Everyone kind of looks out for each other out here. We have two toilets, one on each side. Hi, I'm Victoria and this is the Wabi Sabi bus. Come on in. So this is our living room area. We have two couches and six seat belts. That was law for our state and to keep the kids safe. So there is seat belts stashed down in there. Uh, this couch also turns into a full-size bed, which we've utilized a lot. So I'm glad we went that, that route. It also provides a ton of storage underneath um, all the kids' outdoor stuff and, uh, and whatnot litter box now that we have a road cat <laughs> um, and Emily's medical equipment is in there so it's nice to have a central place to easily get to all that. Our trunk is all the kids crafts and board games. So this is our kitchen space. We have a propane cooktop that I recently added so that has worked out a lot better. We're using a camp stove. That wasn't very fun but we have a standard size sink and this is a new addition also for filtered water. So we have a five stage, uh, I think it's Water Drop is the name of the company um, that we've been hearing a lot of great reviews about. So it filters really well. Toaster oven and full size household fridge. Um, that was an addition that came later. We thought we were gonna use like a small propane style fridge, but that wasn't enough room for even drinks for this size family. So. So we have two style pantries for food storage and then cup storage and things. And then this area here is all food storage also. And then dishes and that's it. bus life thing was a big fantasy of mine for a really long time but having a large family didn't really see it happening thought maybe it could be like a summer adventure kind of thing and then COVID hit and we suddenly had a lot of time on our hands and the kids were all about going for the adventure um, but since hitting the road the kids have decided they are totally cool with living this life for however long so a nine-month road trip turned into indefinite. So this is our bunk space for the four kids and it does look pretty narrow through here but we designed it that way because I'm the biggest person that lives here and I wanted the kids to have plenty of head height to sit in their beds and length obviously um, but so they had their own personal space kind of like a little a mini mini bedroom version. Um, just so they could kind of tuck away and get their own personal time. So that's why it's a little tight through here. So this is our closet space here. Um, holds all the kids' clothes, um, bins on that side, and then hanging storage on this side and laundry in the bottom. These doors also slide and double as the bathroom doors. So our bathrooms, we have two in our bus because downsizing from a house with all those kids. We have two toilets, one on each side, a shower on this side, and sink and shelves over here. Yeah, everything is kind of multi-purpose for storage underneath, and everyone always asks what you do for bathrooms, so they are DIY composting toilets, urine diverters, and a bucket system. I know everyone gets super curious and weird about that, but um, it's not that bad. Yeah, having four kids in a bus seemed chaotic. It was a little stressful at first for the small space of downsizing, but 
They actually do great in it and spend a ton of time outside. All the kids have adapted really well to life, like on the road and in the bus. They actually like it a lot more than we all anticipated because we spend so much time outdoors and adventuring and exploring things. Um, the kids are always spread out throughout the bus or on the roof or in a tree on a beach. Like there's more space it feels like on the road in the bus than there even was at home in a 3,500 square foot house on a large property. So that was interesting to learn that we're not sacrificing anything when it comes to space or places to play or anything like that. Um, the biggest change was probably school for them, but again, uh, the whole COVID thing kind of helped me ease them into that because that wasn't a transition that I had to push them for. It was something we were, all kids were just pushed into. Um, so that kind of led a very easy transition into homeschool life on the bus. And now that we've met so many other families on the road, they're meeting tons of other kids that are living the same way. And these kids really learn a lot of things. They get into a lot of stuff and ask a lot of questions and we answer what we can or we've uh, encouraged the kids a lot to go research it, ask, ask rangers questions, ask police officers, ask someone you see digging in the dirt somewhere. And we've learned a lot of really neat things that I don't think we ever would have been exposed to just living in a, a small town. So that's been really neat. All right, so this is the back bedroom space, kind of my bedroom, kind of extra family space. Um, but it's a queen size bed and underneath is the storage for all of our solar and our hot water heater, uh, water pump, all those things. Um, and then off season storage for kids clothes, um, blankets, sleeping bags, all that kind of thing. So this is our map that the kids put up and postcards from a bunch of places we've been, but we have a huge Ziploc of the rest that we need to put up that'll probably cover the ceiling. We think it's kind of cool when we all lay in bed here and just daydream about the places we're going to go out there. And then books that always come down while we drive so they're bungeed together. But all the kids' school books and things like that go up there. Yeah, bus community. That's an amazing thing is uh, finding like-minded community on the road um, that has the same kind of ideals um, as you do about exploring and getting outside of that mainstream hustle and bustle. But everyone kind of looks out for each other out here. I've had multiple breakdowns now and luckily friends were with us or close by and I'm quick to get a lot of anxiety about things like that. But everyone kind of rallies together and calms everybody down, takes the kids to play, you know, runs and drives a couple hours away for a bus part and Everybody gets back on the road again. So bus community is definitely huge. I think for anybody who's nomadic is to find your tribe a bit, not only just for yourself and, you know, having a good time, but really everybody kind of watches out for each other and, and helps each other out too. Thank you for watching our tour. If you want to see more of our bus life and our adventures, you can go to our Instagram, Facebook, or TikTok page at Wabi Sabi Bus. It's W-A-B-I-S-A-B-I-B-U-S. -B -B we'll see you guys down the road.